Hi all, I am Disha Shukla and welcome to the session. Now in this session we are going to discuss about the spread spectrum technology called the direct sequence spread spectrum. But before that we need to see how a spread spectrum works. We have seen that in detail in the previous video but here in short I am going to discuss about the same. Now spectrum uses wide band noise like signals. So, because the spread spectrum signal, signals are noise like, they are hard to detect. Spread spectrum signals are also hard to intercept and demodulate. Further, spread spectrum signals are harder to jam, that is, interfere with the narrow band signal. So, this, so the low probability of interceptions, that is, the LPI and the anti jamming feature, that is, the AJ feature, are why the military has used spread spectrum. Moving further, what are the spreading codes? We, we saw that we can spread a narrow band signal using a spreading code. So what actually is a spreading code? A noise like and, and random signals has to be generated at the transmitter. The same signals must be generated at the receiver in synchronization. Now we limit the complexity by specifying only one bit per sample that is a binary sequence. Spread spectrum signals are uses fast codes that run many times the information bandwidth or the data rate. These special spreading codes are called the pseudo random or the pseudo noise codes. Pseudo noise sequence. Pseudo noise generator produces periodic sequence that appears to be random. Pseudo noise sequences are generated by an algorithm using an initial seed. Sequence isn't statistically random but will pass many tests of randomness. The sequence is referred to as a random number or a pseudo noise sequence. Unless the algorithm and the seeds are known, the sequence is impractical to predict. So what actually is a pseudo noise sequence? I can relate you with uh, this with the, see, with the series numbers that we have. That is the series of 1, 4, 9 wherein we have the next numbers wherein we can predict that the next number would be a square of the number. That is we, we learned the series and sequences in our maths wherein we saw that uh, uh, what are the different kinds of series that is when you when when th when the difference between the two numbers is similar or when the numbers are the series whole series uh, is running based on some formula so that kind of a series is called a sequence now here in the pseudo noise uh, sequence also it is something similar now when they are generated you need to specify an initial seed that is at the first the what would be the first point from which you want to start the sequence is called an initial seed. So you need to mention that seed over here. Now the sequence isn't statistically random. So the sequence will not be totally random. I mean the numbers that are generated will be random numbers but they won't be totally random. That is if uh, that is you can get some kind of a series out of those numbers. But there are many randomness tests available and when you pass that whole sequence in that randomness test, it will definitely pass that whole test, the, uh, the whole, whole of them. I mean, it would prove that they are random, but statistically those numbers or those sequence are not random. Sequences that are referred to as a pseudo random numbers are pseudo noise sequence. They are also called as pseudo noise sequences. And as I already said that when you want to interpret the whole thing, you either need the, al you, you need both the algorithm and the seed, then only you can predict the whole sequence. Now it is again similar to the ones that we see in the, in the, uh, in network security things, wherein we need the whole algorithm and the key for getting the data at the receiver side. If you can relate it. Okay, so some of the advantages of spread spectrum are that it eliminates the crosstalk. Better output with data integrity. The data integrity would, uh, would be good. It reduces the effect of multipath fading. Now, we, as we already know that due to the multipath fading, a lot of uh, variations in the whole data is possible. So it reduces the effects of multipath fading. 
security provided is better reduction in the noise coexistence with the other systems is good it has a longer operative distance it is hard to detect and it is not easy to do demodulate or decode it is difficult to jam the signal and although the spreading spectrum techniques were originally designed for the military uses they are now being used widely for the commercial purposes also so moving forward what actually is the first type of the spread spectrum technique that is the direct sequence spread spectrum so dsss or direct sequence spread spectrum is a form of spread spectrum transmission which uses spreading codes to spread the signal out over a wider band than would normally be required the technique behind the direct sequence spread spectrum dsss is at first sight it continues in or in inutilitate but dsss is used in a number of areas where it enables the considerable benefits to be gained so direct sequence spread spectrum's basics can be said as it is a form of transmission that looks very similar to white noise over the bandwidth of transmission however once received and proceeded and processed with the correct descrambling de codes it is possible to extract the required data when transmitting a dsss spread spectrum signal the required data signal is multiplied with what is known as a spreading or chip code stream the resulting data stream has a higher data rate than the data itself often the data is multiplied using the xor function now as you can already see here that the user data and the spreading codes are xor together to get the information that will be spreaded over the over a wide range each bit in the spreading sequence is called a chip and this is much shorter than each information bit the spreading sequence or the chip sequence has the same data rate as the final output from the spreading multiplier the rate is called the chip rate and this is often measured in the terms of a number of m chips per second the basement data stream is then modulated onto a onto a carrier and in this way the overall signal is pro is spread over a much wider bandwidth than if the data has been simply modulated onto the carrier now this is because the signals with the high data rate occupies wider signal bandwidth than those with the lower data rate and to decode the signal and receive the original data the cdma signal is first demodulated from the carrier to reconstitute the high speed data stream this is multiplied with the spreading code to regenerate the original data when this is done then only the data with that was generated with the same spreading code is regenerated all the other data that is generated using the different spreading code streams are ignored now the use of direct sequence spread spectrum is a powerful principle and has many 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 advantages direct sequence spread spectrum the whole process can be said like in order to visualize how the direct sequence spread spectrum process operates the easiest method is to show an example of how the system actually operates in terms of data bits and how the data is recovered from the dsss the first part of the process is to generate the dsss signal take an example that the data to be transmitted is 1001 and the chip or the spreading code is 0010 now for each data bit the complete spreading code is used to multiply the data and in this way for each data bit the spread or the expanded signal consists of four bits in this way it can be seen that the original data is recovered exactly by using the same spreading or the chip code it has another code and uh, had another and i mean whenever using an another code to regenerate the cdma spread spectrum signal then it would have it would result in a random sequence after despreading 
this would have appeared as a noise in the system. The spreading code used in the example is only 4 bit long. This enabled the process to be visualized more easily. Commonly, a spreading code can be 64 bit or even 128 bits long to provide required performance. Now, the information signal in DSS transmission is spreaded at a baseband and then the spreaded signal is modulated by a carrier in a second stage. The important feature of DSSS is its ability to operate in the presence of strong co-channel interference. A popular definition of the process gain of a DSSS is the ratio of the signal band to the message band. That is when you take the ratio of the signal band and the message band, the value that you get is called the processing gain. An interfering signal may be reduced by a factor which may be as high as the process gain. An interfering signal that is reduced will be as high as the processing gain as we already know. Now that is what does it mean? A DSSS transmitter can withstand more interference if the length of the pseudo noise sequence is increased. The output signal to noise ratio of a DSSS receiver may be expressed as SNRO is equal to process gain into signal to noise ratio at I that is at input side where signal to noise ratio I is the signal to noise ratio before despreading before despreading the operation. Now, uh, a major disadvantage of a DSSS is called the near-far effect. Now, this effect is prominent when an interfering transmitter is close to the receiver than the intended transmitter. Although the, co co although the cross correlation between the codes A and B is low, the correlation between the received signal from the interfering transmitter and the code A can be higher than the correlation between the received signal from the intended transmitter. I am sure you won't be clear with whatever I said, but for that just wait and listen to this. Now consider a receiver and two transmitter. One is close to the receiver and the other is far away. Now if both the transmitter transmit simultaneously and at an equal power, then due to the inverse square law, the receiver will receive more power from the nearer transmitter. Now, since one transmission's signal is the other's noise, the signal to noise ratio for the further transmitter is much lower. This makes the further transmitter more difficult, if not impossible to understand. In short, the near far process is one of, one of detecting or filtering out a weaker signal amongst the stronger signal. Now, to place this problem in one more common term, imagine that you are having a, that you are talking to someone six meters away. Now, if the two of you are in quiet or empty room, then a conversation is quite easy to hold at a normal voice level. In a loud, crowded bar, it would be impossible to hear the same voice level, and the other solution is for both of you and your friend to speak louder. Of course, this increases the overall noise level in the bar and every other patron has to talk louder too. That is equivalent to the poor control runaway. Eventually, everyone has to shout to make themselves heard by a person standing right beside them and it is impossible to communicate with anyone more than half a meter away. In general, however a human is very, however, a human is very capable of filtering out the loud sounds. Similar techniques can be deployed in signal processing where the suitable criteria for distinguishing between the signals can be established. Now, taking this analogy back into the wireless communication, the far transmitter would have to drastically increase the transmission power, which simply may not be possible. So this is what it is called a near far effect. Now, as you can see in the figure, when the transmitter B, here the uh, trans user B is close to the receiver and user A is far from the receiver. So A could, so the 
एल पी दैट इज द पावर फ्रॉम ए कुड बी मच बिगर देन दैट फ्रॉम बी इन दिस केस द डिसायर्ड सिग्नल पावर इज स्मॉलर देन दी इंटरफियर्ड पावर सो दिस इज वॉट इट इज कॉल्ड द नियर फार इफेक्ट एंड इट इज अ डिसएडवांटेज द बिगेस्ट डिसएडवांटेज ऑफ डायरेक्ट सिक्वेंस स्प्रेड स्प्रेक्ट्रम बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वी हैव द अनदर मेथड दैट इज द फ्रीक्वेंसी हॉपिंग स्प्रेड स्प्रेक्ट्रम एंड दैट विल बी डिस्कसिंग लेटर बट till here we saw that what is a direct sequence spread spectrum we saw that we have a pseudo noise uh, or a pseudo sequence we add that sequence using the xor that is we actually xor it with our information signal to get the new signal and using that signal we uh, transmit that signal using the channel and further at the de- at the receiver side it is again demodulated using the same pseudo noise uh, sequence and uh, hence you get the whole thing the whole message as it is back now if you are not clear with this you can contact me and up till then keep learning